Good day or evening to everyone out there in the decoding world. My name is Logan, and this is Decode Your Reality. And today I'm going to be breaking down and decoding the topic gold current. As in gold currency. That's where the word currency comes from. So as I always say, you know, put some headphones on, get immersed in the music, in the background, my voice, really pay attention to this presentation. As I say, you know, the time you spend that you invest in this presentation will be well worth the time you spend on this presentation. It's going to be another long one. I have a lot of slides, but folks, you know, as I continue to decode, things start to get tighter and the story becomes more narrowed down and more defined. And that's what we're looking for because we're getting close to what I believe to be how things really work. So, you know, it really comes down to the gold current. And then, of course, currency, which is where the word money comes into play. Notice that the word money is a 22 in numerology and that's a direct match of both Michael and what he battled in the book of Revelation. If you fancy theology, the dragon. And, you know, again, we go back to the current. And the current really is all about the sine wave. And we're going to get into that as well. Um, you know, the subtleties in this. Here is Michael battling the dragon. 11, the sodium. And then titanium. Saturn's moon, Titan. 22 plus 11 is 33. So there's some subtleties there, but we can't leave them out. And, you know, that story's going to play out its part during this presentation. That I can assure you. So let's get into the topics of this presentation. In the zero position, what I'm doing now, the intro. Number one, the X and the Y. Number two, the tree of love and fear. Number three, the Ark. Number four, Gold, Death, Dragon. Number five, the word current. Number six, follow the yellow brick road. Oh yeah, we got some Wizard of Oz in here. Number seven, the word recycle. Number eight, Gold Food. And then of course, always want to know what you see following up in the position number nine. What did you see during this presentation? So getting into this X and Y folks, and you know, then you, this is, we're getting into kind of trigonometry, which I'm not a big, um, huge participant of using it. I actually decoded somebody who wanted me to read them. And he's very much into trigonometry. He uses it every single day. But nonetheless, this is all about the gold current. And this is the up and down wave, the trough. And, you know, in this center position would be, if you will, the earth plane. Or it would be pH balanced. 7.365 if you fancy medical stuff. Health and wellness, pH balance, 7.365, homeostasis. All those things would fit in the very dead center of that line going across horizontally. And then that up and down trough. And this is the actual formula for this wave, the sine wave. I call it the sin wave, but it's Y equals sin X. And it's no accident that they actually did this and it's expressed that way because you know, it really gets into our chromosomes. You know, what is the sine wave? It's a geometric waveform that oscillates up or down, side or side. And it's defined by this right here, this function Y equals sin X. That's what it is. And you'll notice the moving wheel, which is pi, really. This little moving up and down wave, you'll notice that the pi circle, the circle of pi makes that sine wave, which is the gold current 
that we all participate in creating. And as you notice that wheel moving, it's creating two halves of a circle, 360 degrees, and half of that is 180. You know, the band perfect circle. I mean, there's a reason why that circle fits into this narrative. And it fits into our DNA, folks, our chromosomes. Because the X and the Y is our chromosomes. And that's what this trigonometry is expressing itself as. The sine wave. And we're all creating using that sine wave. And here's another rendition of it right here. As it moves, it goes up and down which creates our dualistic environment. That's our duality, folks. The chromosomes are related to the duality, which is, cre which is related to the sine wave, which is related to the gold current. And I showed this, I posted it, a lot of you shared it. Thank you so very much. This was a profound discovery on my part, for me personally. And of course, you know, I'm a huge advocate of using pi, the measurement of the perfect circle, because that's really, really, if you, if you backtrack and you look at this, you know, rendition of how the sine wave works, it's the pi, it's pi, it's the circle. The wave creates the circle or the circle creates the wave. They fit, they're in bed together and our chromosomes are in bed with these things. And so, you know, it's all about getting to that pi and the measurement of pi. And that's why, to me, it's very, very accurate. There's only one way to measure it. Not like numerology, you have multiple ciphers and, you know, it takes a little bit of a skill to interpret those expressions of numerology. But with pi, it takes some skill, but there's only one way to observe it, really. So notice, you know, the 33 which is related to the 33 steps, which is related to how many vertebrae we have, which is of course related to the crucifixion and the Christ and all those things that we all know that are wrapped around that 33. So esoterically, it's linked to our DNA, our chromosomes, because the 33 is found at the 24th and the 25th digit of pi and the 24th and 25th letters in the English alphabet is the X and the Y, and that's, that those are our chromosomes. Those are our chromosomes. So now you know what the 33 is all about. And you know, when, they, when, we, when we say, well, they're using the 33 to code, yes, because they're trying to code or reprogram the chromosomes. So that is definitely something that's playing out its part. If somebody's out there behind the scenes utilizing programming methods, subconscious programming, it's all linked to reprogramming our chromosomes, which of course ends up creating the future. So, you know, the human genome, it's organized into 23 pairs of chromosomes. And you know, that's linked to the word blood, that's linked to the word crown, it's linked to the word history, big time nouns, in our English language that are linked to our chromosomes, the X and the Y. So these are big tie-ins, they're all in bed together and this is the reason why these words are so huge when it comes to describing our matrix reality. And you know, I mean, the blood is sacred, folks. So your DNA is sacred and you can see how numerology comes into play with our chromosomes and the esoteric. And, you know, then you get into the string of pi once again, we want to measure the, where's the 23 found? We know what the 33 is linked to the X and the Y, but notice that the 23, which is related to the blood and the chromosomes, it's found at the 16th and 17th decimal digits of pi. And when you add up 16 and 17, you're going to get the number 33, which, you know, you backtrack and you notice that, you know, again, here it is. The 24 and 25 are linked to that 33. So you see the strong connections with our chromosomes and the word blood and the word history and the word crown using the Chaldean. You're not going to find that using other numerology ciphers. Not that those don't have merit, but they're not closely linked like the Chaldean is with pi, with the tarot, the cards of illumination. That's why I prefer to use it. And so, you know, the other way to measure pi is to add up the digits 
in the string of pi and get a total numerology output and then link that to an element on the periodic table, linking it to the cards. There's several ways to do it. So, you know, the 33 is a big number. We all know that esoterically, it's linked to a lot of major things in our world. And, you know, the Christ, the 33 vertebrae, the 33 steps in Freemasonry, they're all big time, you know, expressions in our world. And so, you know, when you take 33 digits past the 3.3.14, 3 all the way here, you get it and you add it up, you get a total of 100 and 54 154 and that is linked to the 64th element of the periodic table called gadolinium it's the god element the gd and remember that's why i have a picture of our double helix right here because you see there are 64 possible codons in our dna which is linked to our chromosomes you see how closely related pi is to these major things that are our biology, the makeup of who we are, which again is the current. We're electrical sources of energy and we're being mined for gold and we're gonna get into that folks. But you know, this is a huge expression of what this 33 and 24 and 25 and chromosomes, the X and the Y is all about. So you can see how they tie in. And you know, that's why the story of the Christ has a lot of merit. Um, and again, it's a story, folks. The thing about these stories is they're written in the software called life, called the game of life. We're playing the game of life and they're written in the software. So, you know, it's really up to you as the observer to determine what you want to believe. It's not up to me. I'm just here to show you my truths and opinions. It's totally up to you what you want to believe. But, uh, you know, the Jesus fish, because this is the Christian born-again fish, and the, re you know, the reason why it's in this shape is it's right here. It's our double helix, which is the fish bladder right there, which is where the NFL football came from, and a lot of symbols are embedded into this. But it's our double helix. You know, it's the merger of worlds. It's the Vesica Pisces. It's related to the 119 and the element tin, which is the 50th element related to... Jupiter and Saturn. But nonetheless, when you go 64 digits into pi, now we're doing 64, it totals 315. And that's found once again to the 64th element because you see 315, you jumble those, it also can be 153. And if you fancy theology, and if you watch my decode on Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd, which was really a lot about the Peter, St. Peter and Jesus and fishing. Jesus was a fisher of men. How many fish did they catch when Peter threw the net overboard? 153. And the reason why that, name, that number is so significant, besides it being inside the Vesica Pisces and the measurement of that, is because it's linked to our DNA, the fish the bladder of the fish. And we're all fish, we're goldfish, making gold current, which is where currency comes into play. And we're gonna get more into that, folks. And so really it comes down to these two elements on the periodic table that are linked to our DNA and chromosomes, the X and Y chromosomes, because X is the 24th letter and Y is the 25th. If I zoom in here, just so you can see it a little bit better, there it is. The X and the Y is 24 and 25. That's linked to these two elements right here. Chromium, as in chromosomes, and manganese, which is all about magnetism. Magnetism and the light spectrum, which is what we are. That's how you would interpret this. That's because manganese is derived from the word magnet. Magnets are collecting fish, collecting gold currency. And when you really decode the abbreviations of chromium and manganese, CH and MN, you get the number 17. And that is linked to these two big words that you're going to be seeing a little bit more during this presentation, which I showed in the Pink Floyd Wish You Were Here gold and fish and you know we're being mined for gold and we're all fish like pink floyd says we're all two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl folks we live in an aquarium there's some truth to the to the movie the truman show 
And we live in the sea of space. And space, which is what we occupy, has precipitation in it, which has water in it. We breathe in precipitation. We don't need gills like a fish. We have lungs, but we're still fish. That's why Jesus was a fisher of men, fishing for our chromosomes, fishing for our chromosomes. And you know, when you add up these two elements right here, which are related to the X and Y chromosomes, which is related to our gold current that we're all creating, Going over to the trusty calculator, now we get into alchemy, the blending of these elements, and you'll notice that the total output of chromium and manganese is 106.879, and then of course measuring that through pi to get a further expression of what this all means, the 106 appears at the 1011th decimal digit of pi, which is the 111 with the zero in there, giving it infinite potential. Because the zero means pi itself, it means the perfect circle, it means infinite potential, which is what the X and Y chromosomes is all about. Human beings have infinite potential. We just limit ourselves. We just limit ourselves. And you know, that is linked to the flash of creation. If you want to get into Kabbalah, and that whole story, that's linked to our chromosomes because the 1011 or the 111 is linked to the expression 1.21 gigawatts, which was made known in the movie Back to the Future, which is a bolt of lightning. And of course, Kabbalah is all about the flash of creation, the bolt of lightning, bringing man down here to earth, bringing our chromosomes down here on earth. And when you actually do the numerology of the chromium and manganese tied to the X and Y chromosomes, look at what you get, folks. The number 64, which is 64 possible codons in our DNA. 64 squares on a chessboard. 64 numbers in the ancient I Ching system. Folks, this is the very reason why this 64 is so special. And you know, six and four, when you break those up, it's indigo and green. It's Uranus and Jupiter. It's the third eye and the heart chakra. Those, those, that's what the 64 is related to the X and Y, related to the male, female. Related to the pineal gland and the heart. That's what this means. And I'm gonna get more into that when we talk about the arc of the covenant. So, you know, really it comes down to that 106, which, you know, the subtleties folks is if you study theology, if you like that whole story, remember that the earth was created in six days, starting at, of course, the void and then day number one and day number six, creating man. I mean, that story is subtly in this expression of chromium and manganese. And remember, this is chromium is the light spectrum the rainbow and the manganese is the magnet. Together they form us as human beings and our chromosomes that creating the gold current. And this is related to our X and Y chromosomes. It's the tree of life and tree of knowledge because, you know, I'm gonna backtrack and, you know, here is the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. The two trees intertwining, spinning in our double helix, our DNA. I mean, you're talking about getting into biology getting into the human biology, bringing it into the esoteric and, and, and the theology and astro theology and astrology and numerology, all of these are tied together. It was written in the script long before we got here, folks. That's why they're showing themselves like they are. And that 106 tied to our X and Y chromosomes is linked to this tree of life and tree of knowledge. You see, tree of life is 46. This is the original, I'm going off of theology here, and this is the original from the Old Testament, the Torah. This is how they spelled it. This is, this is the tree of life, and this is the tree of knowledge, 46 and 47. And you know, palladium and silver, the 46 and 47th elements, they both have many multiple atomic weights or masses, but both of them also carry both the 106, tied to the X and Y chromosomes 
tied to chromium mang and manganese. The tree of life and tree of knowledge is right there, tied to our DNA, tied to the fish. We're all goldfish creating gold current. We're currency, folks. And we create that through our energy, our expressions, our emotions. And there it is. It's, it's the double helix. So the tree of life and tree of knowledge, folks, is our DNA. It's the X and the Y. It is our double helix. Deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA. Tree of life, tree of knowledge. And this is where Pi starts to show itself and give us a further rendition of the tree of life and tree of knowledge. Notice that the number 37 occupies both the 46th and 47th decimal digits of Pi. And that's why this 37 is very, very special because of that aspect right there. And when you study, you know, when you know, when you know the numbers, three is Pi, because Pi is 3.1, and then seven is the crown. So it's the crown giving its energy to pi infinite potential. It would be the colors yellow and violet if you want to go into the light spectrum. And, you know, really it comes down to really going further with this and now getting into nature itself. You see, the sun and moon, I believe, are in bed together with the tree of life and tree of knowledge. It's a 55 if you reduce them down, but... Its total expression is 37, which is uh, right in line with this, where the 46 and 47 is found in the string of pi. So completely the sun and moon could likely be the tree of life. I mean, what does the sun do? It gives us life. It gives us life and the, the tree of knowledge would be the moon and the moon is linked to the 18th card in the tarot, which is also tied to the Lynx card and the medicine deck and the Lynx, Lynx is all about the keeper of secrets. The knowledge, the tree of knowledge, the Lynx card, the 18th card, linked to the moon card. So, you know, it's very likely, and, and I, I'm not even gonna say it's very likely, I know this is the way it works. I'm saying it's very likely because it's up to you to decide on that. But these are my truths, and I believe wholeheartedly the tree of life and tree of knowledge, when you step outside and look up in the sky, is the sun and the moon. And so, you know, the whole story of like, oh, don't bite the apple, well, that's like, don't stare at the moon, don't look at the moon, because that's what it really represents, which is our DNA, folks. The sun and moon, make no mistake about it, are linked to our double helix, linked to our duality. This is the duality of nature right there. That's what it is. Here's a further rendition of it. The sun is life. Card 19, which is a battery. And the moon is the representation of the word knowledge. And you know, I mean, the Christ, Jesus equals 18, and that's the 18th card. Even the word Christ equals 18. The keeper of knowledge. Keeper of Secrets, the Lynx card in the medicine deck. And that's tied to the only two emotions that we as human beings have, love and fear. Everything else is all subordinate to these two emotions, love and fear. Both of them create, by the way, you know, some of you think love's the only way. Well, you know, when you, sometimes you get complacent so, you know, fear sometimes makes you create. So they both have the aspect of creation and they're both part of it. Like it or not, they're both part of our matrix reality. This world we live in, this game of life that we're playing has both love and fear in it. 1000%. There's no escaping that. We all have the love and fear. And notice it's a 37 tied to the tree of life and tree of knowledge. And you know, when you really break it down from a perspective of the words themselves, you know, I mean, what happens when you start to gain knowledge, folks? Would you say that it could cause some fear? Absolutely, because when you're starting to understand this information, it can kind of get a little bit fearful because you're like, oh my God, you know, like, what, am, what have I got myself into? How do, a lot of you think you're stuck here. Like, how do I get out of here? People, I, we need, I need to escape this matrix. Maybe. 
Maybe, you know, there's so many ways to observe it, but knowledge can be fearful, right? Can it not? And then, you know, life is all about love. When you love life, I mean, the, the subtleties, but you can clearly see how the interpretations are completely in bed with these cards and these words coming from the Hebrew now, by the way. There's only one way to decode the Hebrew, well, unless you get into using the, the natural gematria of Hebrew, but this is the uh, Hebrew ordinal using the numbers 1 through 22. But nonetheless, you're going to have the same output. So then you get into the Ark, folks, the Ark of the Covenant. And then, I mean, that gets into the story of Noah's Ark. And that whole story. And, you know, really it's about the tree of life and tree of knowledge, which is the 19th card is the sun card. The 18th card is the moon card. The 18 and 19 in the periodic table is the, um, the elements argon and potassium. That spells out the word arc, folks. And I believe wholeheartedly that there's a dome over our head. And I'm not going to even get into the whole globe or flat earth or concave. Listen, I believe we live in a dome. We live in a fishbowl. We live in like a, um, one of those things you shake up and the snow goes everywhere, whatever those things are called. My mind drew a blank. But nonetheless, a snow globe. But nonetheless, we have an arc that goes over us. The sun and moon move in that fashion over the ecliptic in an arc-like fashion. They move in a circle pattern and they're the Ark of the Covenant. They are the Ark of the Covenant. And right here are the two average atomic weights of argon and potassium. And that gets into these, this element here, the electric eye, because again, 18 and 19, when you do the alchemy of potassium and argon, you're going to get 37. 18 plus 19 is 37. And this is the actual icon that the Royal Society of Chemistry uses. And I don't even know if they know this stuff. I don't know, folks. But again, man's being, I keep saying man is being used to express this matrix reality. Consciously or unconsciously, it's being done. And so, of course, as fate would have it, the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to put this up here. It represents photo cells, and, it, and they call it an electric eye. Yeah, because these are electric, the electric eyes. You could say these are watching over us. You could also say they're stargates, how we got here. A lot of different variations and ways to observe these vantage points. And again, it's linked to the tree of life and tree of knowledge. Linked to our double helix. Our DNA. Linked to our X and Y chromosomes, which provide gold current. So, you know, when you break down the word arc and do the alchemology, which is taking the numerology of a word and then bringing the elements of the periodic table. That's called alchemology if you're new to this. And so arc is a one, two, two. That has significance if you break that down. And that's hydrogen and two heliums. And going over to the trusty calculator, you're going to get an output of 9.014. And you know, the word pineal, as in the third eye, which is why I have a picture of it right here. That's a 9 and 14. See, when you say pineal, this is another way you can decode, folks. I did this, you know, quite a bit in some of my older research, is breaking words up in their proper syllable aspects. So pineal is a two-syllable word, pi and neal. And remember, it's pineal is pi. It's freaking pi. So our third eye has infinite potential. That's what it means, pi, neal. 9 and 14. And I showed this in other decodes that this is Jesus and Lucifer. That's what it is. Part of our DNA. And that's 9, 14. Pi, pineal, pi, third eye, pi, third eye. That's the arc related to the sun and moon. Clearly it's related to the sun and moon. And, you know, I mean, 
here's our triangle right there. You know, you have the third eye with our two eyes. It, this creates the Trinity right there. I showed this in my decode of the Vesica Pisces. Check that video out, but there, there's the triangle right there. There's our Trinity. And here's our infinite potential. That's why you want to keep this third eye wide open. You want to open it up. I, those that temporarily hold the secrets from you that are being exposed now, they've tried to dummy you down through so many different ways so you don't see with this. Because you see, these two eyes right there are deceivers. They're your black suns. When you look in the mirror, you'll notice you have two pupils and they're black. Nobody has any different shades of color. Everybody has a black pupil, two of them. Those are your Satans because your eyes can deceive you. You can be deceived by illusions. The only way you can be deceived by illusions is when you look at them and you look at them with your black sons, your Satans, your deceivers right there. It's this that won't deceive you if you know how to interpret the correct way. And that's, this is the Ark of the Covenant right here, folks. It's clear as day. That's what it means. Tied to the sun and moon. Tied to the tree of life and tree of knowledge. Tied to our gold current. Because you see, when you do the alchemy of the Ark of the Covenant, the sun and moon, argon and potassium, and you add up their average weights, going to the trusty calculator, look at what you get. 79, which is gold. Which is why I have, I mean, we're two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl. This fish represents this side and this fish represents this side. It would be, you know, Jesus and Lucifer. Two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl. And this double helix just spins, which is embedded into the sine wave which is embedded into infinite potential in pi. And we're being mined for gold, our energy. I mean, the Greeks called it ambrosia. That was the food for the gods. We were ambrosia. And the goldfish, you know, we're the fish. We're the goldfish. So then we get into the gold death. And how significant is this? You see, the number 79, which is linked to the element gold, let's look at what Pi has to say. Well, it's the 79 is found at the 13th decimal digit, 13 and 14, which is 27, and we're going to get into that. But look at what the 13th card is. It's death in the tarot. You see why the tarot has so much to say in all this and how it's not from the devil? Because if the tarot is from the devil, that means that Pi and numbers are from the devil. And we all use numbers. So that means we must all be devils. Kind of how that would be playing out if you want to get really deep in all this kind of stuff. I mean, those of you that study theology and think that the tarot and the mystical arts are from the devil, well, then you better stop using numbers. Your Bible is littered with numbers. Verses and chapters, they're all numbered. So I guess that means you're part of what we're doing here with this great research using the mystical arts. They're all, they're all in bed together, folks. Astrology, numerology, tarot, cards of illumination, pi, prime numbers. They're, they're all tied together. There's no separation. You trying to say that it's wrong or it's from the devil is you just literally limiting yourself from the truth. But anyway, notice the significance of this. Gold is linked to the 13th number, which is death. Gold. We're being mined for gold, folks. Gold current. We're currency. Energy. And then, of course, that gets into the, the dragon wave. I mean, have you ever seen the pendulum that with the balls and how they, you, 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 you start them all at the same time and they end up moving in that dragon or sine wave fashion? It's pretty amazing. There's a lot of videos out there. Here's one of them. Notice how the balls move. Side to side, just like that sine wave. No one's trying to fidget those balls. They're moving exactly the way they're supposed to be moving. And they move in this. That's why the dragon is in the shape of this sine wave, the S. 
And that's why, you know, Michael battled the dragon. Because the dragon is the sine wave and we're creating all that through our emotions. And you know, when you take the 79 in the string of pi, it, it, it occupies the 13th digit, but it also occupies the 14th digit. And 13 plus 14 is 27. And when you link the element of the periodic table that's tied to the 27, that's cobalt. And let me zoom in. Here's the actual picture the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to use. I've been showing this over and over. This is a goblin right here in the middle because cobalt comes from the word cobalt, which means goblin. And then, of course, they have two dragons on each side. And then uh, what I believe to be the pineal gland, the pine cone. And I, obviously it's crystal clear. And you know, this is chaos and order, chaos order. Stuck inside the dragon sine wave, stuck inside the gold current that we create. That's why the dragon is so revered in, um, in, in Chinese, in the Chinese zodiac and in the culture, the dragon, because it's linked, it's linked to gold, but it's linked to cobalt and it's linked to Lucifer. And we're going to get into that. I like to call it the sin wave because we create sin. We're all sinners stuck here down in the fishbowl. We inherited that. And, you know, it's linked to our DNA. And, you know, remember the 64, the GD element has an atomic weight of 153. It has multiple, but the 153 is the, the amount of fish that Peter caught when he threw the net overboard that Jesus was fishing at. Told him to throw the nets over. Well, the 64 in the string of pi is found at the 22nd decimal digit, 22 and 23. But the 22 is linked to the third eye because that's at the number six, 64. And that 22 is these two characters right there, Michael battling the dragon. Of course, because it's the dragon and Michael. That's our double helix, folks, Jesus and Lucifer. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty crystal clear when you start to see the expressions like this. It's pretty crystal clear. And when you, you know, you take the dragon, you put it right over the DNA. I mean, if you just follow it, there it is. I mean, it just, the dragon is just perfectly in match with the shape of this double helix. And it's in, we're gold currency. We create the gold, folks. We, this is the DNA sin wave. It's the wave. And the dragon is all part of that. So then you actually get into the word current and currency, which is where currency came from. We're current. You know, that's why, you know, the Vatican, they literally own your social security number and it's traded on the stock exchange. They're, listen, the bonds and all stuff, that, that's way deep. But your energy is being harvested and used. Make no mistake about it. And what's the ironic thing about it, the catch-22 is it's, it's the Catholic Church, and nothing against you Catholics, because I think it's got a lot of beauty in it, but it's Rome and it's the Vatican who really run everything right now, but their empire is starting to fall, and they're proponents of the Bible, the Torian Bible, Bible, the two bulls linked to Venus. Because Venus and Taurus are the two signs, two, the number two. They're linked to the, number, the color orange. But it's just ironic that the Vatican preaches the Bible, yet they're owned by the dragon. It's just really fascinating. But, you know, the, the snake and all that stuff, it's, re, it's just such mockery. But the truth's coming out. The truth's coming out. And, you know, notice that current is 27. Same as the word Currency. They're both 27s, and that's tied to the dragonfly card. This is where the medicine cards are so beautiful when they start to express themselves with numerology. The 27th card in the deck is the dragonfly. And there are the dragons on the icon the Royal Society of Chemistry used for the 27th element, cobalt, which means chaos and order, which is linked to the DNA sin wave that we all have, which is linked to dragon and Michael, can you see how this is all starting to unfold, folks? And how this whole story is 
completely embedded in our reality and it was here long before we got here folks you see the people that created these cards they weren't around when these elements were found the people that created this system came long before this system came into play but here we are connecting the dots because this is how the matrix works this is how our world works i should say forget the matrix this is how our world works and it's fixed it's rigged it was already everything that gets written is is being written because it's supposed to be being written it strengthens the story and then it gets to the climax and boom just like that it repeats and starts over the reset that's the inhale and exhale of the universe by the way the universe right now is completely inhaling and it's about to reach the climax and it's going to take a breath out and that's when the implosion is going to happen but anyway going further into the string of pie folks with this number 27 the dragonfly and this element chaos and order the cobalt linked to lucifer the number 27 in the string of pie look where it's found the 28th decimal digit how about that 28 and 29 which is 57 which is linked to nickel old saint nick devil's copper but notice you know lucifer that that name is 28 linked to the 27 linked to cobalt and the dragon linked to the dragonfly and michael battled the dragon so clearly the story is we have jesus and lucifer on our dna folks and black sabbath the great band black sabbath said it so wonderfully they said it goes on and on it's heaven and hell it's exactly what's going on that's what's going on in our world that's what's going on in all of us personally no matter where your situation lies so then you do you know i've done this before but the alchemology of lucifer here's lucifer's numerology 28 it's a seven letter word i mean the subtleties you know lutetium is the 71st element that's tied to the 174 this is the seven colors of the rainbow lucifer is known as the light bringer the light spectrum has all seven colors of the rainbow but here is the elements tied to his numerology output and the alchemology of that going to the trusty calculator is the numbers 58 and 47 which is tied to these two elements right here see numbers they'll encroach upon one another so you just can't label it to one meaning because these things encroach so lucifer's tied to cobalt and tied to old saint nick this is called devil's copper they, they call it devil's copper lucifer's known as the devil he's known as the devil and 27 and 28 tied together and that they both have the atomic weight of 58. so i know this has a ton of merit tied to the story in our matrix reality the dragonfly and then you know the subtleties there's tetragrammaton on the feminine side you know and then i mean the word gold itself comes from the word orum and i've shown that orum is 19 which is battery but gold is a 17 and remember the word fish is a 17 and we're talking about gold current that's what i'm currently decoding right now gold current which is the dna sin wave which is michael and the dragon the dragon wave our double helix we're being mined for our gold folks our energy and you know then the 17 what about that number because that you know that's the light spectrum that's 71 backwards 71's lutetium 17 17 plus 71 equals the number 88 tied to jesus the christ but anyway in the string of pi 17 it appears at the 95th decimal digit of pi 95 and 96 and when you add those up 95 and 96 that's what you're going to get 191 which is a battery battery is 19 and 91 and that's the element osmium as in the wizard of oz i mean what color was the brick road yellow what color is gold yellow 
So the movie, The Wizard of Oz, and I'm going to end up doing a decode on it because there's just so many nuggets in there and it's just mind blowing. I, I'm surprised I haven't decoded it yet, but The Wizard of Oz is a 64 tied to our DNA, tied to the fish. So who's the Wizard of Oz? So gee, is Jesus part of the Wizard of Oz? Mining you for gold. Taking your energy. If you haven't seen my decode on the Christ battery, I'd highly suggest you watch that. Here are the fish, 153 fish. 64 possible codons in our DNA tied to the Wizard of Oz. Who's Oz? That story, I mean, that movie came out in 1939. That's tied to the 88, tied to the Christ. Oz is a 77, and then it, of course, reduces down to the 14, and then the 5. 5 is the most potent number because it sits right in the middle of your dial. Go open up your dial pad or calculator. You'll see the 5 sits right in the middle. Collects all the energy from all the other numbers. If you were to place a pyramid over there, the pinnacle or apex of the pyramid would be in the 5 position. Anyway, the Oz is a 77. It reduces to that 14 and, you know, I mean, that's, that's why I don't like using this word. People like to just use it. What does it really mean? It has a lot of meanings. I prefer not to use it because of the meanings that are attached to it. Anyway, 77 is tied to this element right here, iridium, which is tied to the Greek goddess of the rainbow. The rainbow that's in Wizard of Oz. You see, that's, that's why this is in the movie. Because it's the iridium, this element. And this is called isotope 193. Whenever they have the 192.9, they're going to round up. That's why they say it's isotope 193. Iridium does have an atomic weight of 193. It's isotope 194. But nonetheless, this is isotope 193. And that's interesting because in numberempire.com, where we get the prime numbers and Fibonacci numbers, which, of course, prime numbers are standalone numbers. If you're not using that, I don't know why you're not using it for your decodes because they're important. 193 is the 44th prime number. And that's tied to the title of this presentation. Gold current. Follow the yellow brick road, which was made of the color gold, yellow. Which represents our third chakra point, the solar plexus. I did a decode on that. Check out my gut decode. Clearly, that's our sun. Also tied to Mars. But it's our gold. And I mean, you know, remember, if you don't eat good, if you've got a shitty eating habits, your digestion is going to get compromised, your gold's going to get compromised, and your body's going to swell up and have all these kind of reactions, inflammation. And that's why it's important to keep the gut clean. Especially for those of you that have a lot of planets in the third house of your astrology chart, really important because you got a lot of energy in the third house that represents your solar plexus chakra. Especially if you got Chiron in there. But anyway, that's for a different story. But I, this, the, 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 the expressions of this are unbelievable. I should say believable. I like to use that word, but they're amazing, the expressions. The Wizard of Oz tied to the gold current. So are we really supposed to follow that yellow brick road? Let's go a little bit further. Gold current is a 44 found from the Wizard of Oz. Found from Oz. Found from the rainbow. And folks, remember, we're made up of the rainbow, the light spectrum. We're light being slowed down into physical matter. The X chromosome tied to chromium. Tied to the rainbow. Tied to cro chromium comes from chroma meaning the colors of the rainbow. So 44, let's go further. In the string of pi, 44, look where it appears. At the 59th and 60th decimal digits of pi. 59 plus 60 equals the number 119, which is the mirror of the 911. I wonder if that's why whoever created the emergency number for the U.S. decided they were going to use 911. I wonder if that was the reason why. But anyway, these are the two elements that are tied to the 44 through the string of pi. The 59th and 60th element, praseodymium and neodymium. 
And I showed this during my matrix decode. I wanted to show you this, even though this is kind of off topic, but it has everything to do with this presentation. You know, these are the two characters, the main characters in the movie, The Matrix. It's Mr. Smith and Mr. Anderson. It's Hugo Weaving and Keanu Reeves. And when you do their alchemology, I'm sorry, their numerology on their birth names, you get 137, which is the 33rd prime number. And I believe that these two elements are the representation of these two characters. Remember, this Neo, the reason why Keanu Reeves, if you do his alchemology, by the way, it's going to equal 143, which is the atomic weight of Neodymium, which is why they chose him for the role. Subconsciously, of course, because I know they weren't using this methodology. Man's being used. That's why his name was Neo, because he's Neodymium. He's the one. Neo is one spelled backwards or jumbled up, the Enneagram of one. And neodymium's used to, it's magnetic, tied to the pyramids, the Great Pyramid of Giza. And then here is the 59th element, and this is considered the green twin. How many, th this guy had a ton of twins. And this whole movie was about green, the color green. This element's called the green twin. 59 and 60 is 119. And that's what I believe to be these two characters, because I know for sure that Keanu Reeves was neodymium. Make no mistake about it and his nemesis was the 59th element. And they both make the number 119, which is tied to gold current. So you can see how this all unfolds and shows itself quite beautifully. It's a magnificent expression of the software written in this matrix reality. And we're all being used. Wachowskis were being used to create the matrix. Yeah, of course, some of the things they created were conscious, but a lot of them were not. Too many moving parts. So let's go a little bit further. So again, gold current, which is what we're being used for, our currency. Our currency is gold. And you have gold current is 44. And that leads to the numbers 59 and 60, which is 119. It ends at the 60th decimal digit. So let's go 60 digits in, because we would end up adding all these digits up, 60 all the way back to the 1. So here is 60 digits in the string of pi, matching that of the number 44, matching that of gold current. You get the number 296. There's the yin yang in there with duality. Of course, our deal, so this, this right here means the yin yang, and then two is duality, which is our double helix in DNA. That's how you read these numbers. It's not just 296. So then when you go a little bit further, folks, this is where the beauty of pi comes in again. Let's measure the 296. So we find the 296 appearing at the 1,059 decimal digit of pi, but it occupies three spaces. So it's 1059, 1060, and 1061. So the, the number six of this 296 is the 1,061st decimal digit of pi. And folks, what is the golden ratio? Yeah, 1.61. How about that? Folks, how about that? This 296 is linked to the golden ratio tied to gold current? Tied to the Wizard of Oz? How about that, folks? So you see, there are no accidents. There are no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. Everything in your life and my life and everything on this world stage happens because it's supposed to happen. Because it was written in the software long before we all got here. We're just playing out our part. We're just playing out our part. And that's why it's important for you to know who you are and why you're here. So you can play out your part the best you can. Some of you are not even at any anywhere near your capacity so it's important to really understand your true power decode yourself and you know if you want a reading hit me up that's what i do that's how i besides these videos how do you think i do these videos i put all these videos out i don't ask anything anything from anybody i just do it because it's my destiny but to support myself i do readings i show you your true power you know that's what i do i love doing it it's part, i love doing it Love it because I see so many amazing people and they're not even living out their true potential. And then when I do a reading, man, it's like, oh, then they, they start, wow. They're like, oh my God. I have to, yeah, because it's your, that's, your, that's your destiny. 
So anyway, then we get into follow the yellow brick road, which was the big caption in the Wizard of Oz. Follow the yellow brick road. The subtleties, you know, it's 24 letters tied to chromium, chroma, the X chromosomes, the subtleties. Notice it's the number 97 and the mirror of the 97 is 79. And what is the 79th element? That's gold, folks. And what color is gold? Well, it's obviously the color yellow. What's interesting about this yellow it starts with the letter Y, as in the Yod, as in Yaldabaoth, the Yod Hey Vahe, Yaldabaoth, the Demiurge. Yeah, even Yeshua is, starts with the letter Y. But notice that these two big words that I've been decoding and I'm going to continue to show, you know, that story, the fallen angels, which I think we're descendants of, those also equal the number 25. I mean, adversary equals 25. The word black sun equals 25. The word fallen equals 25. And remember, the 25th letter in the English alphabet is the letter Y. 25th letter. 25th letter. So the big other big standout is the direction was follow the yellow brick road. Hey, follow it. So what is follow? It's 34, which is tied to goldfish. So essentially what it's saying is, hey, fish, go down that yellow brick road. You know, the subtleties wearing the ruby, ruby red slippers. When you take red and yellow together, there's your stoplight at a traffic intersection. Red and yellow, you're missing the green. But red denotes the root chakra, which denotes hell. Can also denote the opposite as well, because red is at the top of the spectrum when you're looking up, not looking down. But nonetheless, we're fish being used for, we're gold, gold currency. And follow is directly related to that goldfish. So then, you know, we get into that letter Y, folks, because remember, you know, yellow starts with the letter Y, and we know Y is tied to our chromosomes, and Y is the 25th letter in the English alphabet. 25 is linked to this adversary and black sun and fallen, the fallen ones. And they're tied to the serpent because, you know, this amazing picture, I think this is a viper, but what is this in the shape of? I mean, there's the V right there. Make no mistake about it. This is linked to the number five and Leo the lion, the lion of Judah. And then it would be have the I there. So it's the VI, which is linked to the number six, but it's also in the shape of the letter Y. And this, the, that, this is why this story has so much merit. The snake deceived Eve, the letter Y, the 25 deceived Eve. It's fascinating. And then, you know, the number 97, which is the mirror of the 79, which is gold itself, using numberempire.com, look at what prime number it is. It's the 25th prime number. Tied to, you know, fallen and adversary. I mean, that story in theology, the dragon and the fallen one and the adversaries, well, they're tied to the serpent. But it's also tied to mainstream because, you know, remember this is the Wizard of Oz and uh, the Oz means God. That's why I don't like using that term. I've, I've strived to give up using that word because it, it can meet, has so many meanings to it. See, I think, I believe once you start to define the one true source, what, if you can define it, that means you're not talking about the one true source anymore. Because the one true source, it will never show itself. You'll never be able to define it. And that's what I'm at. That, I mean, you can't. You can't. The, what you can define is not the one true source. That's my opinion, by the way. But anyway, you know, this whole story. And remember, the Vatican, all, the, all these religions, they're all the same, just packaged differently. But, you know, th then we get into reincarnation. And um, it's very possible that we get, we get reincarnated again. 
we're in the game of life and we're being used for our energetic goals. And, you know, look at what the word recycle, cycle, cycle. I mean, it's tied to the subtleties, tied to the devil card, cycle. But it's recycle to do it over again. And that's a 25. The word recycle is 22, tied to dragon and the Michael character. Tied to change, tied to alchemy. Tied to titanium. Saturn's moon Titan, tied to the 22. Tied to the 47, because titanium has an atomic weight of 47, which is tetragrammaton. The Yod. So the story about deceiving Eve is tied to the Yod, and <laughs> it's just a very dangerous book, folks. Very dangerous book. What about the English? If you don't like the Chaldean, the Eng what does the English have to say? Well, recycle is 71. Total 71, that's lutetium, that's Lucy, Lucy in the sky with diamonds. And, you know, that 71 is tied to the 20th prime number, which is tied to our bones. Our bones are made of calcium primarily, which has got an atomic weight of 39. That's tied to the element yttrium. 39, has 39 protons, which is tied to the Back to the Future movie, the 88 miles an hour, tied to the 88 constellations, tied to the 88 keys on a piano, tied to music and harmony and vibration. So calcium, our bones, is tied to... Lucifer, tied to the recycle, tied to the Christ, because Christ is 39 through its alchemology, but it's tied to the letter Y. Just tied to the 25, 25th letter is the Y, tied to the snake's tongue. I mean, it's just fascinating when you observe all these things like that. And you can see they're all in bed together. They're all in bed together. And, you know, remember, you know, the feminine energy is the, is the energy that gives birth, not the masculine. Although they need one another to produce offspring. So then, yeah, you get into this crucifixion and this symbol. And, you know, folks, I showed this on my Christ decode, the Christ battery decode, that this is the flux capacitor, which is tied to the 88 because that's what made time travel possible was the flux capacitor, which is in the shape of a letter Y, which is right there on the crucifixion, which is the Y, which is the 25, which means adversary and fallen and tied to the snake's tongue and tied to the Christ. So is the Christ tied directly to the snake? And it's the same construct. It's just there to fool you. So you get recycled back in. And if you believe this whole thing about us being used for gold, gold currency, our gold current, our energy. Like the Greek said, we're being used for food, ambrosia. Well, you would need a story that would be, you know, bulletproof. You couldn't penetrate the story. It would be bulletproof. Well, I like what Oscar Wilde said. He said, everything popular is wrong. I like that quote. I really, really do. And what's popular in this world today? This story, this whole story is popular. And we're moving out of the fish age, the Piscean age. We're, we're moving into the Aquarius age if we're not in it already. And that's to know thyself. I mean, there's even, in a, there's even a scripture in the Bible where Jesus talks about, you know, follow me into the house with a man bearing a pitcher of water, which means Aquarius. The Bible is, is Santos Bonacci, astro theology. That's why Santos is spot on with, all, with many of his decodes and his expressions. His mind is amazing because theology is astrology. And yet we're, they're told, don't, don't, don't use astrology. This is kind of a big catch 22. So, you know, when you look at the cross, even though, you know, this is to me the letter Y right there, but, you know, I mean, maybe they pull him up here and his arms do go out stretched. Well, then it would form the letter T. And, uh, you know, the, the letter T is the 20th letter in the English alphabet, which, it, again, it doesn't matter if it's a Y or a T, it's still linked to our calcium, 
our bones, tied to the 39, tied to the 88, tied to the Christ. And I show this with my decode of Yaldabaoth, that it's very, 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 very possible that the Yaldabaoth character runs everything, which is just the Yod, and he's using you for your energy. And the story of the crucifixion and the Christ, and I mean, think about, I want you to really use your noggin for a second. Why, if, if you believe in theology wholeheartedly and all stuff, why do you feel like you must put your faith in somebody else to save you? Why? The only person that's going to save you is you. It's like, pose that question. Why do you feel like you have to put your faith in a character to save you? And it's not even the, the, the creator. That's the, even the, the biggest part of it all is Jesus is just a middleman. As beautiful as that energy is, and I'm, I'm really, I know it sounds like I knock that energy quite a bit. I question it. It concerns me. And even though it's a beautiful energy, that could be the trap. That's how it gets you lured in and you'll never see it coming because it's such a beautiful energy. And then you just, all of a sudden you get recycled back in. That's a possibility. That's why I trust nothing. So all these things, this is the only way that I can make sense of it. I can't just take a book that was found in the Quran caves back in 19, mind you, the Dead Sea Scrolls, do you know what year they were found in? 1946 to 1947. That's the tree of life and tree of knowledge, folks. By accident? No, it was on purpose, by design. I don't trust these books. I don't know who wrote them, where they came from. The story, I think you need to use discernment. I mean, I think we're making some, some truth to the story. I mean, it's very possible we are, we were descendants of something just but where do we go that's the other story that is stuff and, and i really move more towards the vedic where we move from the golden age to the dark age and then it repeats itself life is cyclical i mean the trees they grow their leaves they drop their leaves they grow their leaves at summer winter expansion contraction that's what i believe just step outside and look at nature that'll give you some truths stop listening to people that really are just giving you a story that they have no idea where it came from. Anyway, this is, the, this is the last part of my presentation. I think I have two slides left before I ask you what you see. And I want to really show you the numerology of a statement that reads, mankind is being harvested for gold. The subtleties, you know, 30 letters, that's tied to, I mean, Jehovah equals 30 in the Chaldean. That's tied to the rabbit card. Alice is the number 30 down the rabbit hole, down into Wonderland, being harvested for gold. And maybe it is, folks, maybe we need to become really good people and be more service to others. And that's how we're going to escape this place. That's the way I see the way out of this. Just be in service to the world. Help the world out. Give yourself to the helping people out. Don't, you know, I mean, obviously become the best you can be, but that's the only true savior that you're going to find is becoming the best version of you. So you wake up happy every day and your vibration goes up. That's how you're going to be worth more gold. But anyway, mankind is being harvested for gold. Notice it's a number one, one. One, and that's really fascinating because that leads right back to the fish. Because you see, how many fish did they catch when Peter threw the nets overboard? 153. In the Vesica Pisces, it measures 153. So that 111, which is tied to a bolt of lightning, tied to Kabbalah and the flash of creation, tied to theology, tied to our DNA. Because we're just goldfish, folks. We live in an aquarium. And we're being harvested for our gold. And where we go after this is an opinion because no one can prove it. It's not, there's not, no way to prove where you go. The only thing is you can wrap your mind around the story to figure it out. And these are just possibilities. 
These are just possibilities. So my last slide, before I ask you what you saw, I wanted to just throw in the English and the septenary. Mankind is being harvested for gold. And notice that, you know, in the English, it's 310, and that's pi, because pi is 3.1. I know people refer to it as 3.14, but it's pi, the most balanced version of pi is 3.1. And there's pi itself behind it, the infinite potential of the zero, where all numbers come from. The zero. And then in the septenary, if you fancy that one, it's the 119. Tied to the gold current, because 44 is found in the 59th and 60th decimal digits, which is 119. Which is 119, folks. So, what is it that you saw during this presentation? I got over an hour invested in this presentation. I could probably do another two hours on this presentation, but, you know, I try to keep these short, but as you can see, it's really challenging to do that with all the information. It's so complex, so many moving parts, so much narration to go into all this kind of stuff, but... Nonetheless, what is it you saw during this presentation? I'd love to hear your comments and feedback, your additions to all this, and what you think about the gold current, our currency. Well, anyway, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decoder Reality. I thank each and every one of you for watching.